Whereupon Joseph, her husband, being a just man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Those of us who have a devotion uh, to the glorious St. Joseph, we'll need to see if our devotion is real. And how can we test to prove to ourselves that this devotion is real? We must first know what it is at the very core of this devotion to St. Joseph and what is at the very core of the heart of St. Joseph's devotion, his heart. And I think it's this, to live by faith, to have the theological virtue of faith operative, ardent, and powerful within us. That is the test by which we can say that we are devoted sons and daughters of this glorious Saint Joseph. Saint Joseph was living by faith. He was guided in all things by the divine providence as he was stepping on the divide between the Old and the New Testament. And he himself found himself following some of the most glorious designs and mysteries that heaven can ever afford earth. St. Joseph's soul was one of complete confidence in God and, in his, and in also in his plans. St. Matthew, Matthew says, Whereupon Joseph, her husband, being a just man. Biblically, a just man is a man that lives by faith. You find this at least four times in sacred scriptures the prophet Habakkuk Saint Paul to the Romans 117 Galatians 311 and the book of Hebrews 1038 where it says a just man is a man that lives by faith living by faith notice the scriptures didn't say a man who lives by fear. Notice it's not said a man who lives by excessive worries. Notice it doesn't say a man who lives by public opinion and what other people are thinking. Notice it doesn't say uh, lives by the caprices, caprices of the great grandma Hildeberger. And on and on and on and on go. Rather, the faith, boyhood, girlhood, simple faith, pristine faith. Now, this faith doesn't mean that it's going to be completely exempt of exhaustion, fatigue, um, vexations, doubt, sometimes even moments of doubt, because faith always has an aspect of obscurity to it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called faith. But there is a certain light, and the stronger it is, the better to be able to deal with the collateral damage, which is worries or vexations and the, and the like. So it is well affirmed that no one lived by faith after the Blessed Virgin more than St. Joseph the universal patron of the church and how blessed is Italy that has a national holiday on this day. Everything shuts down. It will make the blue laws look like a, a secularized uh, atheism to them. Because we should celebrate St. Joseph to the very core of our being. We thank God for giving us this great guide, this great example and even St. Francis 
the sales would say that he's a soon body and soul into heaven. Something that we don't maybe talk about too much because we don't want to disturb the theologians. <laughs> but a glorious St. Joseph, a man of great, great faith that's able to help us. Even so, 105 years ago, he appears to the children of Fatima during the miracle of the sun. The glorious St. Joseph, he has a very special mission for our day. Today, a faithless day, a faithless age in which we walk and live. Having spent his whole life within the orbit of the mystery of the incarnation, being created for a very special role to play in that mystery of the incarnation. He necessarily had to pass through the darkness which surrounded that great mystery. Meaning that not all was clear and cut, and nor visible to him. Much was hidden from his eyes. Just like the hidden life of Christ for 30 years. During his perplexity that was aroused, for example, by the mysterious maternity of the Blessed Virgin, by the extreme poverty and anxieties connected with Bethlehem, all of this and the privations of, of Egypt, all of this afflicted his sensitive soul, St. Joseph, so much so that he needed an angel to show him the way. And he persevered in that faith and God rewarded him abundantly. So sometimes it's hard for us to discover God's plans in our own lives because much of this mystery is very mysterious. Sorry for the pun. Sometimes we ask ourselves, is God calling me to a religious vocation for some of the, the little lads here among us, uh, our guests. Is God calling me to the married state? Or is God calling me to public office? Is he calling me to a penitential life? Is God calling me to bring the fight for the church in a more vivid and public way or to keep this fight at the threshold of my hermitage? There's so many questions the soul could be asking, not only just young people, but even those who've already found their states of life. So many questions, so many inter inter interrogations. And yes, my dear sisters, you found your mysterious call to this monastery, Laos Deo. thanks to the Blessed Virgin and the prayers and example of St. Joseph. But finding it, we do find it because of the imitation and the prayers of St. Joseph, our patron, our father. He who was wrapped in the mystery, who persevered, trusted, and thus fulfilled the work of the Lord. Glorious St. Joseph, pray for us. Help us to find what we need to do in our lives, whether it's to find our state of life or whether it's to find the, the unique role of holiness that God has marked out for me through his divine providence to still to be had, to still to be fulfilled. As we continue the holy sacrifice at a mass, let us consider some of these words of the great Saint Therese de Lisieux, the little flower, in her little work called the Novissima Verba. Yeah. She wrote this, O oh, Saint Joseph, how much I love thee, how much good it does me to think 
of thy humble and simple life. Like us, thou live by faith. Although thou lived with the Son of God, thy life was very ordinary. For Jesus certainly did not perform useless miracles. Everything in thy life was just as it is in ours. And how many sorrows, fatigues, and dangers. Oh, how astonished we should be if we knew all that thou hast suffered. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.